Asitwende moja kwa moja kwa neno. So now we pass to the word of God in Exodus 33. Tufungue um, neno la Mungu kitabu cha kutoka 20 And I want the social media to give the word yes. Exodus 33 verse 11 to 23. Kutoka 33 mstari wa 11 hadi 20. And let's all read. Tusome sote kutoka sura ya 33 mstari kuanzia wa 11 tusome sote basi Naye Bwana akasema na Musa uso kwa uso kama vile mtu asemavyo na rafiki yake kisha akageuka akarejea hata maragoni bali mtumishi wake Yoshua mwana wa Nuni naye ni kijana hakutoka mle hemani Musa akamwambia Bwana Angalia wewe waniambia wachukue watu hawa nawe huku nijulisha ni nani atakayemtuma utakayemtuma pamoja nami walakini umesema nakujua jina lako nawe umepata neema mbele zangu basi sasa na kuomba ikiwa nimepata neema mbele zako unionyeshe njia zako nipate kukujua ili nipate neema mbele zako Ukakumbuke ya kuwa taifa hilo ndilo watu wako. Akasema, uso wangu utakwenda pamoja nawe. Nami nitakupa raha. Naye akamwambia, uso wako usipokwenda pamoja nami, usituchukue kutoka hapa. Kwa maana itajulikanaje kuwa nimepata neema mbele zako, mimi na watu wako? Sio kwa sababu unakwenda pamoja nasi. Hata mimi na watu wako tutengwe na watu wote walio juu ya uso wa nchi. Bwana akamwambia Musa, nitafanya na neno hili ulilonena kwa maana umepata neema mbele zangu. Nami nakujua jina lako. Akasema, nakusihi unionyeshe utukufu wako. Akasema, nitapitisha wema wangu wote mbele yako. Nami Nita litangaza jina la Bwana mbele yako. Nami nitamfadhili yeye nitakayemfadhili. Nitamrehemu yeye nitakayemrehemu. Kisha akasema, huwezi kuniona uso wangu maana mwanadamu hataniona akaishi. Bwana akasema, tazama, hapa pana mahali karibu nami. Nawe utasimama juu ya mwamba kisha itakuwa wakati una, unapopita utukufu wangu nitakutia katika ufa wa ule mwamba na kukufunika kwa mkono wangu hata nitakapokuwa nimekwisha kupita nami nitaondoa mkono wangu nawe utaniona nyuma yangu bali uso wangu hautaonekana let's finish in Ephesians 2 verse 4 to 6 hebu tufungu, tufungue kitabu cha Efeso sura ya pili mstari wa 4 hadi wa sita. Waefeso sura ya pili mstari wa 4 hadi wa sita. Lakini Mungu kwa kuwa ni mwingi wa rehema kwa mapenzi yake makuu aliyotupenda hata wakati ule tulipokuwa wafu kwa sababu ya makosa yetu alituisha pamoja na Kristo yani mmeokolewa kwa neema akatufufua pamoja naye akatuketisha pamoja naye katika ulimwengu wa roho katika Kristo Yesu Father we give you praise we say thank you for these words Baba tunakupa sifa tunasema asante kwa mafungu haya ya neno lako As we release this word of God Tunapoachilia neno hili la Mungu I pray that this becomes flesh in our bodies and spirit in our spirit and bring light in our spiritual being naomba neno hili lifanyike nyama katika miili yetu lifanyike roho katika roho zetu baba na liweze kuuisha maisha yetu na roho zetu that it become a seed in the people who are listening to this word neno hili lifanyike mbegu kwa wote wanaolisikiliza and your purpose na makusudi yako of shifting us ya kuweza kutuhamisha 
Let it be our portion. Acha yawe fungu letu. As we receive this word. Tunapopokea neno hili. With thanksgiving. Kwa shukrani. In Jesus mighty name. Katika jina kuu la Yesu. Hallelujah. Amina. Praise the Lord. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. As we are ending the subtopic of uh, redemptive love. Tunapokuwa tukimalizia toward the end kichwa hichi cha kwanza cha upendo ukomba wao tunaposogelea mwisho i know that you receive a lot of knowledge in this topic najua mmepokea maarifa mengi kutoka kwa somo hili so god is about to shift us in a new realm kwa hivyo mungu yu tayari kutuhamisha tuingie anga mpya and the topic of today is the realm has shifted na somo la leo ni kuwa anga imeshahama the realm has shifted already anga tayari imeshahama hallelujah amina last Sunday we say that I know that my pain is my gain. Wiki iliyopita tulisema hivi najua ya kuwa katika uchungu wangu kuna faida yangu. It's not easy to say that unless you really know in the spiritual realm. Si rahisi kusema hivyo hadi pale umepafahamu jambo hilo katika ulimwengu wa roho. And we know that uh, Mr. Job went through trials he went through persecution that we cannot even explain the pain he went through na tunajua yule bwana ayubu alipitia uchungu na mateso na dhiki ambayo haielezeki kwa urahisi kwa maneno somebody was saying that there are three main areas where people can go through challenges mtu alisema hivi kuna maeneo matatu makuu ambapo mtu anaweza kupitia changamoto three main ways that the enemy can affect and afflict your life. Njia tatu ambazo ibilisi anaweza kuyatesa na kugusa maisha yako katika njia ya hasi. Number one, the enemy will try to afflict you in your flesh by bringing sickness and disease. La kwanza ni kuwa adui anaweza kuletea mateso katika mwili wako kwa kuletea maradhi na magonjwa. And because you are feeling that pain, you, it's not easy to believe that God can heal you. Na kwa sababu unahisi uchungu huo, si rahisi wewe kuamini kuwa Mungu anaweza kukuponya. The reality is that you are going through pain. Hakika ukweli ni kuwa unapitia uchungu. But the word by faith says that by the stripes of Jesus we were healed. Lakini neno la Bwana kwa imani limesema kuwa kwa mapigo ya Yesu mimi na wewe tumepona. So when the enemy brings pain, sickness and disease, it is trying to prove to you that healing from the Lord is not possible. Kwa hivyo ibilisi anapokuletea uchungu, magonjwa na maradhi, anajaribu kukuambia wewe kuwa uponyaji hauwezekani. And because you feel that pain and you receive if by faith your healing you may tend to think that indeed there is no healing in Jesus na kwa sababu unasikia uchungu huo kihalisi katika mwili wako ili hali uponyaji waja kwa imani huwezi kuamini unashindwa kuamini kuwa but, unaweza kupona but i want to advise you that even in that pain you stand on the rock as god was telling moses to stand on the rock lakini ningependa kukushauri hata katikati ya uchungu huo hebu simama juu ya mwamba jinsi mungu alivyomwambia musa si mama juu ya mwamba huu by faith start believing and defending that the word of god is true that by the straps of jesus we were healed kwa imani wewe simama na uanze kutetea na kupigania imani ukisema hivi kwa mapigo ya yesu mimi nimepona for we don't walk by faith by, by sight but we walk by faith kwa sababu hatuenendi kwa kuona tuenenda kwa imani we don't we don't walk by what we feel but we walk by faith hatuenendi kwa kile ambacho tunakihisi twaenenda kwa imani so get ready to enter that spiritual realm of warfare until you find that the faith that you have is now implementing in your body and by the end of the day you receive your healing kwa hivyo jiandae kuingia katika vita vya kiroho hadi pale imani yako ambayo unaikiri ikuletee ma Ma, matokeo na katika mwili wako uweze kupata uponyaji huo just know that it is possible and it will take place amini kwa jambo hilo lawezekana na hakika litatokea the second realm whereby the enemy may afflict you sehemu ya pili ambayo ibilisi anaweza kukutesa nayo it is in the realm of finance ni katika eneo la hela the fedha. realm of luck hela eneo la kupungukiwa some people they they believe so much in the healing of god and indeed they are in good health but they don't believe that in god you can prosper and be rich 
Baadhi, the glory of God. Baadhi ya watu wanaamini hakika kuwa uponyaji ni wa kwao na kwa imani wanatembea kwa afya njema. Lakini watu hawa hawa hawaamini kuwa Mungu anaweza kubariki katika ulimwengu huu ukawatajiri ukaishi kwa kutoshelezwa. As much as we don't preach the prosperity message, but yet we believe that in God we can be blessed and prosper. Ndio kusudi letu kubwa siku mbili na kunena tu mahubiri ya mafanikio lakini kwa imani katika Mungu huyu tunayemwamini tunaamini kuwa tunaweza kufanikiwa because i've realized that some people believe in prosperity and that's the topic from january to december there's no balance lakini na, na, najua kuna watu ambao wanaamini sana mafanikio kuanzia mwezi wa kwanza hadi wa 12 wanahubiri tu mafanikio and some other people they don't believe in that prosperity and they tend to think that they are holier when they are poor na wengine hawaamini kuhusu mafanikio wanadhani kuwa ni watakatifu zaidi wanapokuwa ni maskini but they don't know that the enemy is taking them to the extreme so that they suffer poverty hawajui kuwa ibilisi anawasukuma mbali kwenye mipaka kule ili waweze kuishi na wateseke katika umaskini so we need to come in the middle where we are preaching Christ and by Christ we see the benefit of Christ. Kwa hivyo lazima pawe na usawia tukijua kuwa tunamhubiri Kristo na Kristo ndani yake mafanikio yapo. Tell your neighbor it's not a sin to be rich. Mwambie jirani yako jirani si dhambi kuwa maskini, kuwa tajiri. But it's a sin when you love riches more than God. Lakini ni dhambi unapopenda utajiri au hela kumliko Mungu because the root of so, every evil it's money the love of money kwa, kwa, kwa sababu chimbuko la kila maovu ni tamaa ya hela in god we can prosper katika Mungu tutaweza kufanikiwa so that's why we preach the message of christ na ndio maana tuyahubiri ule ujumbe wa Kristo we preach about the message of christ christ likeness tuhubiri kuhusu ujumbe wa Kristo yani kufanana na Kristo and we preach the kingdom of god na tunahubiri kuhusu ufalme wa Mungu without neglecting in that kingdom we can also be blessed bila kusahau au kupuuzia kuwa katika ufalme huo huo tuweza kubarikiwa so hallelujah amina so when the enemy want to attack you in that area of finance kwa hivyo no matter what you do ad- you you will be just suffering because of lack of money adui anapokushambulia anapo katika ile eneo la hela au fedha haijalishi unafanya, unafanya nini bado unakuwa umefungwa katika kifungo cha kupungukiwa na umaskini and my prayer is that the lord will set you free today sala yangu leo ni kuwa mungu akuweke huru leo number three, the area whereby the enemy will attack you la tatu eneo ambalo ibilisi anaweza kushambulia it is in the area of relationship ni katika eneo la mahusiano relationship mahusiano marriage it's your problem ndoa tatizo lako you don't have any problem with your health huna shida na afya yako you are in good health huko katika afya njema you don't have any problem with your finance huna tatizo na fedha zako but the problem that is the big mountain for you it is in the area of relationship lakini tatizo kubwa na mlima mbele yako ni mahusiano yako your marriage is not in a good shape ndoa yako haiko timamu or maybe you have divorced already au tayari umeshatoa talaka so or maybe you are unmarried au haujaolewa those are the three main areas where the enemy will attack you hayo ni maeneo matatu makubwa ambayo ibilisi atakushambulia kwayo but guess what lakini tazama mr job huyu bwana ayubu in all the three areas katika maeneo matatu hayo yote three of them he was attacked alishambuliwa kwa matatu hayo he was attacked in his health akashambuliwa katika afya yake he was attacked in his finance mashambulizi katika mali zake he lost everything alipoteza kila kitu he was attacked in in, in relationship akashambuliwa katika mahusiano with his wife mke wake his friends marafiki zake his neighbors majirani till his servants hadi hata waja kazi wake it was not easy haikuwa rahisi but one thing he said lakini jambo moja alilosema one thing i know jambo moja nalojua my redeemer lives mtetezi wa my redeemer lives it doesn't matter if i'm suffering in my finance in my health in my relation i know one thing my redeemer lives and one day at the end of the day the lord shall stand on this earth and defend me haijalishi ninayopitia katika afya yangu katika mali zangu katika mahusiano yangu jambo nalijua ni kuwa Bwana mtetezi wangu you hai na siku moja atasimama kunitetea katika ulimwengu huu. He also said that I know that 
akasema pia najua with my own eyes kwa macho yangu mwenyewe even when my flesh will be destroyed with pain wangu ukiwa maharibika My skin and my bones are all together. Ngozi yangu imeshikana na mifupa yangu. But what I know. Nalolijua. With my own eyes. Kwa macho yangu mwenyewe. In this flesh. Katika mwili huu. I shall see the Lord. Nitamuona Bwana. Hallelujah. Amina. Then he end up saying. Akasema pia. I know that with you God. Najua kuwa pamoja nawe Mungu. Everything is possible. Hakuna lisilowezekana. What do you know? Je, unajua nini? When you are going through your challenges. Unapopitia changamoto zako. What do you know? Unajua nini? What you know? Unachokijua? It's what will happen to you. Ndicho kitakachokutokea. Indeed. Hakika. God appeared to him. Mungu alimtokea Ayubu. He saw if his own eyes. Aliona kwa macho yake mwenyewe. In which way I don't know. Kwa njia gani katika ulimwengu wa damu na nyama au kiroho sijui lakini najua kuwa Ayubu alimwona Mungu. He was healed. Aliponywa? He was restored. Alirejeshwa. Financially he was restored. Kifedha alirejeshwa. In the relationship he was restored. Maisha yake yakarejeshwa. And whatever he lost he gained it na twice. Na chochote ambacho alikipoteza alikipata maradufu. He got other children. Akapata watoto wengine. And he had a long life na akawa na maisha marefu let me tell you acha nikwambie be always on the side of god kila wakati baki katika upande wa mungu no matter what you are going through this in this world haijalishi unapitia nini hata asubuhi ya leo the pain in your body katika mwili huu no matter what you are going with your pockets haijalishi unapitia nini katika mifuko yako no matter what you are going in your relationship haijalishi mahusiano yako yanapitia nini just be on the side of god wewe baki katika upande wa mungu believing in his word ukiamini neno lake and know that he loves you so much na ukijua kuwa mungu anakupenda kupita upeo as you keep on trusting in him unapozidi kumtumainia God will do something Mungu atajibu He will shift you in a new atmosphere Atakuhamisha uingie anga jipya Hallelujah Amen Hallelujah Amen My message today is that God is shifting some people in, ujumbe, in a new realm Ujumbe wangu leo ni kuwa Mungu anawahamisha baadhi ya watu hapa kuingia anga jipya God is so faithful Mungu ni mwaminifu After he has bought us with his blood Baada ya kutununua kwa damu yake He redeemed us with his love Akatukomboa kwa upendo wake is another thing that God is going to do. Kuna jambo jingine ambalo Mungu atalifanya. He will transfer you and me. Ataniamisha mimi na wewe. He will shift us in the new way. Atatuamisha atuingize anga jipya. Spiritually. Kiroho. Hallelujah. Amen. So that you see that the grace of God ili uweze kuona kuwa neema ya Mungu. The grace of God that is increasing. Neema ya Mungu inayozidi. Is now manifesting favor. Sasa hivi inadhihirisha upendeleo. You know sometimes we don't understand the difference between grace and favor. Unajua mara nyingine huwezi kutofautisha uh, kati ya neema na upendeleo. I can only say that favor it's a manifested grace. Naweza kusema kuwa upendeleo ni neema iliyodhihirishwa. When grace is operating, neema inapofanya kazi. You may not see it. Unaweza usi- But the moment you start seeing it with your own eyes. Lakini punde tunapoanza kuiona kwa macho yako ya damu na nyama. That grace is manifesting favor. Unagundua kuwa neema hiyo inadhihirisha upendeleo. And favor can be manifested even in the, the physical eyes. Na upendeleo unaweza kudhihirishwa hata macho yako yakayaona. When God sees that you know that you know. Mungu anapojua ya kuwa wewe unajua kuwa unajua. He will come and you come and defend you. Ya kuwa katika hali hii atakuja kunitetea. So he comes. Basi anakuja. He comes. Anakuja. And set you free. Na kukuweka huru. And what will show you that something has changed? Na nini ambacho kitakudhihirishia kuwa kuna jambo ambalo limebadilika? Those things that were very hard. Yale mambo yaliyokuwa magumu suddenly. Punde tu they get loose yanaanza kuwa chia they become easy. Yanafanyika mepesi. You don't understand what happened. Uelewi kilichotokea. Can somebody listen to me? Jamani kuna mtu anasikiliza hapa. Favor is the manifestation of grace. Upendeleo ni udhihirisho wa neema. And when you keep on believing in what you know. Na unapozidi kuamini kile ambacho unakijua. And when you keep on doing what the Lord is telling you to do. Unapozidi kutenda mapenzi ya Mungu kwako. God is watching. Mungu anatazama. God is watching. Mungu yatazama. At a certain point kwa majira fulani God comes down Mungu atashuka His presence come down Uwepo wake utashuka The Bible says Maandiko yanasema God himself was talking to Moses as a man talks to his friend Mungu mwenyewe alizungumza na mtu na Musa uso kwa uso kama vile mtu anavyozungumza na rafiki You might say these are the things of the past 
Unaweza kusema haya ni mambo ya zamani. But I want to tell you it is real. Lakini ningependa kuambia kuwa ni halisi. Even till today. Hata leo. God can come down and talk to you. Mungu anaweza kushuka na kukuzungumzia. Maybe in a different way. Labda kwa njia tofauti. But if you are a spiritual person, lakini kama wewe ni mtu wa kiroho, you know that God is there. Utajua kuwa Mungu yupo. And you know that he's talking to you. Na utajua kuwa anazungumza na wewe. And then wewe. he says, alafu anasema, I know you by your name. Na kujua kwa jina lako. Sometimes I wonder. Mara nyingine najiuliza. Three names. Nina majina matatu. So if God speaks to me. Sasa Mungu anapozungumza nani? Or if he calls me. Au anaponiita. Which name is he going to use? Ni jina lipi atakalotumia? But what I know. Lakini nalojua. He knows you. Anakujua. He knows me. Ananijua. By my name. Kwa jina langu. By your name. Kwa jina lako. And if na kama you allow him wewe utamruhusu because he loved us kwa sababu alitupenda but what he is looking for lakini anachokitafuta is that relationship between you and me ni mahusiano ya karibu kati yake na wewe tell your neighbor Ebu where kambie, there is love jirani yako jirani popote penye upendo where there is love popote penye upendo there is relationship pana mahusiano there cannot be love without relationship hapawezi kuwa na upendo bila mahusiano if god loves us kama mungu anatupenda if we love god kama tunampenda mungu we need to be in relationship with him tunahitaji kuingia katika mahusiano na yeye and that's how we see that god was in relationship with moses na hivyo ndivyo tulivyoona mungu akishiriki katika mahusiano na musa and tell his friend i love you akamwambia rafiki yake i love you nakupenda i love i know you by your name nakujua kwa jina and You have found grace in my sight. Na wewe umepata neema mbele ya macho yangu. You have found grace in my sight. Umepata neema machoni kwangu. And his friends speaks back. Na rafiki yake akajibu. God, if I found favor. Mungu, Bwana Bwana kama nimepata ne upendeleo I have found grace kama nimeipata neema show me your way nionyeshe njia zako that i may know you ili niweze kukujua show me your way nifundishe that i may know you njia zako niweze kukujua that i will take these people ili niweze Kuene, kuondoka na watu hao the knowledge of you niwapeleke kwa maarifa yako you wanted to know him more and more alitamani kumjua Mungu zaidi na zaidi listen what god replied sikiliza kile ambacho Mungu alikujibu he said Mungu alijibu my presence akasema uwepo wangu my presence uwepo wangu my presence uwepo wangu my presence uwepo wangu shall go with you utakwenda pamoja nawe shall go with you utakwenda pamoja nanyi And Moses said Musa naye akasema If your presence kama uwepo wako does not come with us hauta en, hauta kwenda nasi we shall not go with these people basi hatuondoki na watu hao as to say indeed we need your presence Ali, alikuwa akisisitiza akisema hakika tuahitaji uwepo wako we need your presence so that we may might move with your people in your presence so that we may separate with other other nations that they know they will see a difference between them and us hakika tunahitaji uwepo wako uweze kwenda nasi ili tutofautishwe na watu wengine katika uso wa nchi wa ulimwengu huu wajue kuwa sisi tu pamoja nawe that they may be separated with us yani watofautishwe let me tell you hacha nikwambie there's nothing else you need Hakuna chochote unachokihitaji ila There's nothing else you need Hakuna kingine unachokihitaji ila What you need unachokihitaji is only the presence of God Ni uwepo tu wa Mungu the, That's the only thing you need Ndilo jambo au kitu unachokihitaji The presence of God Uwepo wa Mungu It will make a difference Utaleta tofauti Once the presence of God is with you Punde tu unapoingia katika uwepo wa Mungu. You be separated with other people. Na uko pamoja nawe utatafautishwa na wengine. No one will tell you. Hakuna atakayekuambia. That this group is not good for you. Ya kuwa kundi hili halikufai. This place is not good for Semu you. Hii haikufai. Stop mingling with people who are drinking, who are smoking, who are sinners. Acha kujishirikisha na watu ambao wanavuta sigara, watu ambao wanatenda maovu. No one will tell you that. Hakuna atakayehitaji kuambia. 
the presence of God in you will be longing for more presence. Because the more you sit with sinners, the more you sit with uh, people who are gossiping, those are the things that affect the presence of God. The more you sit with people who are not happy, people who are complaining, people who are heavy in their spirits, they are heavy they are heavy they are heavy they just see that things are not okay they don't I mean they are just heavy this will spoil the presence of God in you the more you sit with someone with faith someone who carries the peace and the joy of God someone who is full of revelation the more you will be like that person so you need to know that it's a time of separation because when you sit in those dry places with those dry people spiritually they drain you they drain you and the more you are drained the more the presence of God is not there with you things will be very tough things will be very tough so I believe that day God answered the petition of Moses by blessing him with his presence do you think his life remain the same. He said, my presence, my presence will be with you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. In the presence of God, you can excel. In the presence of God, you can be blessed. In the presence of God, you, sh- you, you are able to do everything. In the presence of God, in the presence of God. It is your responsibility, it is my responsibility to maintain the presence of God around myself. I tell Kenny every day, don't forget your mission in this house. In my bedroom, I have worship. I'm worshiping God. When I go down, I find worship songs. I worship God. Everywhere I'm going, the atmosphere of worship is affecting what I'm going through. Because you have to maintain the presence of God. The presence of God. When you have the presence of God, people will listen to you. People, when you are leading them, they will listen to you. Because you carry the presence of God. So what you are called to do, do it fully in the presence of God. I can stay in my bedroom the whole day. If you come there, you find I'm reading the word. I am reading the word. Because my life is in the word. I don't have any other thing. It is in the word. So the word of God with the presence of God upon me will make me succeed. Tell your neighbor your struggles might be in the desert you are living in. A spiritual dryness. Some Christians, they listen to to worldly music. (laughs) We were discussing, we had a discussion at home. Somebody says, so when, when, when someone is married, so even those romance songs are not allowed. 
mtu akauliza eh? je ukiwa umeolewa au umeoa zile nyimbo za kuingiza mahaba sio nzuri at least we need those songs for romance between you and your partner tunahitaji hizo nyimbo ili kuchochea mahaba kati ya mimi na mke wangu na wengine najua hata hapa wanaweza uliza I know some people may, might be asking that question Even here. Even young people they say at least when you are in your bedroom you can put those romance songs to activate love. Haswa vijana wakiwa chumbani kwao wanasema unaweza kuweka hizo nyimbo kuchochea mahaba. Jamani nyimbo nasemaje? What do you say? Kwamba is it a sin is not a sin. Je, ni dhambi kusikiliza hizo nyimbo au si dhambi? It's bad when you are listening to romance songs with somebody who is not your partner. But if it's you and your wife, there's no problem with that. Je, ni dhambi kusikiliza nyimbo kama hizo kuchochea mahaba na mashaua ukiwa na mwenzio au si dhambi? Your eyes are, as are there to activate your partner. Your words are there to activate your partner. Your touch, the word of God, everything is there. you don't need a pagan to activate you with romance songs. It is devilic, it is demonic. It is devilish. Macho yako, maneno yako, neno la Mungu, vyote hivyo viko pale kuweza kuchochea mahaba ama upendo kati yako wewe na mkeo hauhitaji nyimbo za mpagani zichochee mpendo so they said so in that romance we need to start speaking in tongues to be activated and things like that <laughs> akaanza kusema mama unamaanisha kuwa katika shamra shamra hizo tunahitaji kuingia kuneno kwa lugha ili hisia zije mama acha bwana It depends on your level. Inategemea kiwango chako. But what I know. Lakini ninachokijua. In your bedroom. Chumbani kwako. With your partner. Na mumeo au mkeo. In your business. Katika biashara yako. In everything you do. Chochote ukifanyacho. You need the presence of God. Unahitaji uwepo wa Mungu. He blessed Moses. Alimbariki Musa. He knew the task of staff. Alijua kuwa kazi ama jukumu lilikuwa zito It's in another words he say I bless you with my presence my presence shall go with you Kwa maneno mengine akasema kuwa nakubariki kwa uwepo wangu yani uwepo wangu utakwenda nawe Tell your neighbor the only thing you need is the presence of God Mwambie jirani yako jirani unachokihitaji ni upende uwepo wa Mungu tu The presence of God will give you favor Uwepo wa Mungu utakuletea upendeleo The presence of God manifest the grace upon your life by showing favor uwepo wa mungu utadhihirisha neema maishani mwako kwa kudhihirisha when you have the presence of god things will be easier ukiwa na uwepo wa mungu mambo yatakuwa mepesi hallelujah things that are impossible mambo yasiyowezekana will take place yatatendeka This man have seen God. Huyu bwana amemuona Mungu. Moses has seen God. Isa amemuona Mungu. The presence of God was with him. Uwepo wa Mungu ulikuwa pamoja naye. From the time God appeared to him. Tangu Mungu amtokee. And because he was following the steps of God. Na kwa sababu alikuwa akifuata Everything God was telling him he was believing and put it into practice. Sa Mungu na kila kitu ambacho Mungu alimwambia alikitendea kazi. In Exodus 33 God says you have found grace and favor in my sight. Katika kutoka 33 Mungu anamwambia umepata neema na upendeleo machoni mwangu. See the things that were manifesting that the favor of God is at work. Tazama madhihirisho ambayo yalidhihirisha kuwa uwepo wa Mungu na upendeleo wa Mungu ulikuwa kazini. Moses tells the people of Israel. Musa anawaambia wana wa Israeli. We are going tunakwenda tell your neighbors mwambie waambie jirani zenu to give you gold and silver. Wawape dhahabu na shaba and clothes na nguo because kwa sababu you have found favor mumepata upendeleo in the sight of god machoni mwa mungu when the favor of god has come upon your life kibali au upendeleo wa mungu unaposhuka maisha ni mwako even your enemies will bless you hata maadui zako watakubariki pharaoh was ready to bless moses and his people farao alimbariki musa na watu wake neighbors majirani who are despising them ambao walikuwa kwa dharau they start giving them gold and silver a lot of gold and silver and clothes wakaanza kuwapa dhahabu shaba na na nguo and the bible ends up saying and even then the uh, the, 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 the the israel 
The children of Israel They plundered Egypt They plundered Egypt This word plunder Cannot be used for small gold and silver Wali Wali teka nyara they plundered. Awezi kusteka nyara kwa kitu kidogo. You cannot plunder something so small. So when the favor of God is manifesting. Kwa hivyo, kwa hivyo. I mean when the presence of God is with you. Uwepo wa Mungu ukiwa pamoja nawe. You see favor. Utaona upendeleo. Favor is not by by faith. Upendeleo si jambo la Favor is not in the realm of spirit, spiritual realm. Upendeleo si jambo ambalo litakuwa limebaki katika ulimwengu roho. But favor is a spiritual thing but which is manifested even physically. Lakini upendeleo ni jambo la kiroho lililodhihirishwa katika ulimwengu wa damu na nyama. Receive it in Jesus name. Pokea upendeleo katika jina la Yesu. Receive it in Jesus name. Katika jina la Yesu. Receive it in Jesus name. Katika jina la Yesu. In the presence of God. Katika uwepo wa Mungu. Things that were impossible. Mambo ambayo yalikuwa hayawezekani. They will be possible. Yatakuwa Hapakuwa na upendo kati ya wa Misri na wa Yahudi. Wa Yahudi walikuwa watumwa wao. You cannot give gold to a slave. Huwezi kumpa mtumwa dhahabu. Because God said. Lakini kwa sababu Mungu amesema. In those 400 years plus. Katika miaka hiyo zaidi ya 400. You will not go empty handed. Hautaondoka kule mikono mitupu. You will not go empty handed. Hautaondoka mikono mitupu. God is telling you. Mungu anakuambia. In your pain. Katika uchungu wako. You will not go empty handed. Hautaondoka mikono mitupu. In that pain. Katika mateso hayo. Your blessings are there. Baraka zako zipo. Egypt Egypt. Misri was the pain of Israel. Ilikuwa ni mateso kwa Israel. It was pain for the Jews. Ilikuwa ni mateso kwa Wayahudi. But in those pain. Lakini katika mateso hayo. God did not allow that they just go after those years of pain they go empty handed. No. Mungu asingeruhusu baada ya miaka hiyo mingi hiyo ya mateso waondoke mikono mitupu. That's Apana. why I know. Na ndio maana nasadiki. Oh I know. Na nasadiki. That my pain. Ya kuwa uchungu wangu. Is my gain. Ni faida kwangu. In every pain that God allows over my life. Katika kila mateso ambayo Mungu anayaruhusu. In every pain that mwaku. God allowed in your life. Kila uchungu ambao Mungu anauruhusu maisha ni mwako. There is a benefit. Kuna faida. There is gain in it. Pana faida. Because kwa sababu you not come out of that pain hautatoka katika mateso hayo mikono mitupu This is a prophetic word for somebody Hili ni neno la kinabii kwa mtu You didn't suffer in vain Haukuteseka bure In that suffering katika mateso hayo I see gain coming your way Naona faida ikikujia Receive it in the name Pokea of Jesus Pokea katika jina la Yesu the will of God Ni mapenzi ya Mungu But what we have to maintain Lakini kitu ambacho tumepaswa kudumisha It is the presence of God Ni uwepo wa Mungu It is the presence of God. Uwepo wa Mungu. No matter what we go through. Hajalishi tunapitia nini? We need to maintain the presence of God. Tunahitaji kudumisha uwepo wa Mungu. If you are a singer, kama wewe ni mwimbaji. If you are a worshipper, kama wewe ni mwabudu. Then worship God fully. Basi mwabudu Mungu kikweli na kikamilifu. Kama wewe ni mhubiri. Then remain in your assignment. Basi baki katika jukumu lako. In whatever you are doing. Katika chochote ukifanyaje. Do it fully. Kifanye kikamilifu. With the presence of God. Katika uwepo wa Mungu. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God, Mungu, after he has bought us, baada ya kutununua, he redeemed us. Akatukomboa. The Bible says because of that great love. Maandiko yanasema kwa sababu ya upendo huo mkubwa. He loved us. Alitupenda nao. Even when we were still in trepasses. Hata tukiwa bado katika dhambi zetu. While we were sinners. Tukiwa bado kwenye dhambi. Christ died for us. Kristo akafa kwa ajili yetu. And then he paid his own blood. Akalipa kwa gharama ya damu yake mwenyewe. Akatukomboa. And after that, na baada ya haya, he transferred us. Akatuhamisha. Is this is what Paul is saying in Ephesians 2. Hili ndilo ambalo Paulo alisema katika Efeso sura ya 2. From verse 4 to 6. Kuanzia mstari wa 4 hadi wa 6. He transferred us. Alituhamisha. He let us sit. Akatusababisha tukae naye. With him in heavenly places. Tukae naye katika sehemu za mbingu. Can someone read us for us? Read this for us. Hebu soma neno hilo katika Waefeso sura ya pili mstari wa 
Mstari wa 4 to 6. hadi wa sita. Nani atasoma kwa Kiingereza au Kiswahili? Listen to this. This is this is the verse that transformed my life actually. When I knew this word that a hey, so this is it. Ephesians 2 Ephesians um, 2 verse 4 to 6 But God being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us even when we were dead in our trespasses made us alive together with Christ by grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I want you to underline this. He raised us up together and made us sit akatuketisha pamoja naye together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus katika ulimwengu wa roho katika Kristo Yesu this is what we need to know neno hili ndilo ambalo tunapaswa kulijua when i say we need to know it's not that we don't have this information we have the information ninaposema kuwa tunahitaji kujua neno hili simaanishi kuwa hatuna taarifa hizo we might have this information tunazo we might believe in it. Tunaweza kuziamini. But let it be a reality in our spirits. Lakini acha zifanyike uhalisia katika roho zetu. That in whatever I am doing. Ya kuwa katika yote ninayofanya. Spiritually. Kiroho. Legally. Uh, kisheria. I am seated with Christ. Nimekaa na Kristo. In the heavenlies. Katika sehemu za mbingu. We need to make it a reality. Tunahitaji jambo hilo kulielewa na kusajili. We need to get that revelation of our position. That we have been shifted. Tuweze kupata ufunuo huo wa nafasi zetu ya kuwa tayari tumeshahamishwa. So having that information is not enough. Kwa hivyo haitoshi tu kuwa na taarifa hizo. That we are seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Ya kuwa tumeketishwa sehemu za mbingu na Kristo Yesu. We know we all have that information. Sote tunazo taarifa hizo. But when we reach the level lakini tunapofikia hatua of really knowing ya kusadiki na kujua that we are seated in the heavenlies with him. Ya kuwa tumekaa sehemu za mbingu pamoja naye. Then hapo basi we shall not fear anything. Hatutaogopa chochote. Those principalities. Ah uh, nguvu those powers. Nguvu za angani. Those rulers of darkness. Tawala those spiritual za host of wickedness. Giza na mapepo. When you know for you know. Ukijua na ukisadiki. shifted. Ya kuwa umehamishwa. And you are sitting with Christ in, in the heaven. Kristo katika sehemu za mbingu. The stars the moons. Nyota Na and those mwenzi, principalities na anga hizo when we are here we think they are there up there wakuwa anga tukiwa hapa tunadhani kwa when you know where you are seated Lakini legally ukijua umekaa wapi kisheria you know that they are under your feet unajua kuwa wako chini ya miguu yako they are under your feet wako chini ya miguu yako that's why na ndio maana that knowledge Maarifa hayo will give you victory yatakupatia every, ushindi victory in every area katika kila eneo la maisha yako because kwa sababu you cannot be seated hawezi kukaa pamoja with Christ na Kristo in the heavenlies katika sehemu za mbingu and not leave the presence of God na ushindwe kuishi katika uwepo wa Mungu if you are seated there with kama him kama umekaa pamoja naye it means his presence is your portion bila shaka uwepo wake ni fungu lako in the old testament katika gano la Kale. Before the coming of Christ. Kabla ya kuja wa Kristo. God blessed Moses. Mungu alimbariki Musa. With his presence. Na uwepo wake. But after Christ. Lakini baada ya Kristo. Actually we are seated with him. Tumekaa pamoja naye. So there's no way the presence of God will not be there. Kwa hivyo haizekani uwepo wa Mungu usiwe pamoja nasi. There's no way you will sit in a dark place and in a in a in a, in a 
that place in, in the spiritual realm and feel comfortable. Basi haiwezekani ukakaa katika sehemu ya giza kiroho ukajihisi faraja. Haiwezekani. No you accept to marry or to be married by uh, somebody who is not saved. It's not possible. Haiwezekani ukaoa au kuolewa na mtu ambaye hajaokoka. Haiwezekani. Because he would drain the presence of God in your life. Kwa sababu mtu huyo atadhoofisha uwepo wa Mungu maishani mwako. He would drain the presence of God in your life. Atadhoofisha uwepo wote wa Mungu. Because the presence of God and the evil presence does not go together. Kwa sababu uwepo wa Mungu na uwepo wa giza haviambatani. That's why I don't believe that you can put romance song in your bedroom when you are with your partner. You put romance of secular songs. You are calling the devil to be part of whatever you are doing then the presence of god will leave you na ndio maana siamini kuwa unaweza kuweka nyimbo za dunia ili kuchochea hisia zako katika chumba chako huwezi kumuita ibilisi akusaidie kwa mambo ya mungu haiwezekani in your office office ni kwako in your computer katika kompyuta yako let the worship song just be with you acha nyimbo zako ziwe nyimbo za kuabudu i have experienced it acha nikwambie jambo hili ukizungukwa na nyimbo za kuabudu even the work become easy hata kazi inafanyika nyepesi you find yourself dancing and worshiping god unajipata ukimchezea na kumabudu mungu the stress is gone msongo wa mawazo unaondoka hata kama bosi wako anakuletea matatizo. In your heart you just forgive him because you don't want his atmosphere to spoil him. Moyoni mwako unamsamehe kwa sababu hutaki anga yake ya misho kwako. Do you understand what I'm Jay, saying? Unaelewa ninachokuambia? The presence of God. Uwepo wa Mungu. Is God himself. Ni Mungu mwenyewe. This is what will bring favor upon your life. Jambo hili ndilo ambalo litakuletea upendeleo maishani mwako. So when I say 20, 2020 is the year of uncommon favor. Kwa hivyo ninaposema kuwa 2020 ni mwaka wa upendeleo usio wa kawaida. For you and me to know that we need to be in that presence of God to experience the favor of God. Ni kwa ajili yako na mimi tuweze kubaki katika uwepo wa Mungu tuweze kuona upendeleo wa Mungu. When Moses was going to talk with God. Mungu alipo, Musa alipokwenda kuzungumza na Mungu. There was somebody. Palikuwa na mtu. Somebody. Palikuwa na mtu. Called Joshua. Anaitwa Yoshua. He will remain in the tabernacle. Yoshua alibaki kwenye hema. He will remain in the tabernacle. Atabaki kwenye hema. When everyone is gone, kila mtu atakapoondoka. Joshua will remain there. Yoshua atabaki pale. And listen. Sikiliza. And then Moses is asking, you didn't tell me who will go with me. Musa akamuuliza Mungu, hukuniambia ni nani atakwenda pamoja nami? Do you need to ask God? Je, unahitaji kumuuliza Mungu? God did not answer that. Mungu akujibu hilo. Because God wanted his mind to understand. Kwa sababu Mungu alitaka nia ya Musa iweze kuelewa. You will go with those who want my presence. Utakwenda na wale ambao pia wanahitaji kwako. Those who remain in the tabernacle. Wale watakaobaki hemani. Those who enjoy my presence wana ufurahia wepo wangu. Those are the people who go with you. Hao ndio watu ambao wataenenda na wewe. Where do you like to dwell? Je, ungependa kubaki wapi wewe? Where do you like to dwell? Unapenda kukaa wapi? Where is your dwelling place? Sehemu yako makazi yako ni wapi? What is your dwelling place? Makazi yako ni wapi? That can attract favor. Ambayo itavuta upendeleo. It is easy to say it's a year of uncommon favor, uncommon favor. You will say it from January to December, but it is in that presence of god that we hold so so dearly that we are yearning for that actually that presence will activate favor upon your life ni rahisi kusema mwaka wa upendeleo wa ajabu mwaka wa upendeleo usio kawaida unaweza kuimba huo wimbo kuanzia mwezi wa kwanza hadi wa 12 lakini ndugu zangu ni ule uwepo wa mungu ukitamani ukiwa na shauku na uwepo huo ndipo utakaovuta upendeleo huo everyone is excited by whatever is within him or her kila mtu atasisimuliwa na kufurahishwa na kile ambacho kiko ndani yake marafiki zako your friends ni watu wa dunia awardly carnal people nyimbo zako the songs you listen nyimbo to nyimbo za dunia worldly songs utendaji wako your way of doing things ni utendaji wa vitu vya dunia you conduct yourself in maongezi a worldly ni maongezi ya kidunia your conversations are Kila worldly kitu. everything about ni kitu cha kidunia is worldly Boyfriend, girlfriend, watu wa dunia. Mchumba wako wa kike na wa kiume worldly. Kisha unasema uncommon favor. Wapi? Then you sing out upendeleo wa ajabu. Wewe ukatia maji na mafuta vikakorogana hapana. You cannot mix oil and water and they mix up. Maji yatashuka chini. Water will go down. Mafuta yataenda juu. Oil will float. 
kuna watu ambao mnaongea there are people who when they talk yani maongezi yao their conversations ni mavazi are about dressing ni mavazi is their clothing hey umeona ile nguo hey have, umeona sijui nini have you seen that dress have you seen i don't know what kwenye mtandao kwenye internet on the internet ni mitindo ya nguo wanaangalia ni mavazi wanaangalia ni colors wanaangalia hamna maongezi ingine ni hayo hayo tu you search only about fashion you converse only about clothing no other conversations only dressing up and fashion siku hizi iko top vitu vya amekuwa top they say nowadays you see him or her she's on top man top ni nini what is top reality ya top mtu ambaye iko top ni mtu ambaye amejaa uwepo wa Mungu the reality of being on top is somebody who is full with the presence of god akiingia mahali kuna giza unaona watu wanaanza kujipanga panga when they enter a place which is dark or there is darkness people start sorting themselves out utajua kwamba una uwepo wa Mungu unapoingia mahali unaona watu wanaanza ku ficha ficha machupa wanaanza ku sukuma sukuma vitu ambavyo wanasema hey hey lakini watu wanakuona wana, unakaa tu unaongea maongezi haibadiliki hata position hazibadiliki ni hatari sana you will know that you have pres- the presence of god when you go to a place and people scramble to hide those brown bottles and to hide their cigarettes they want to remain like as if they are pure you will know that way you have the presence but when you go into a place people don't bother people just continue and even invite you in those conversations no lakini kama una uwepo wa Mungu but if you have the presence of God ukiingia mahali when you get to a place hata gisi walivyokuwa wanakaa wana change even the way they were seated they would change positions hata ukiwa kwenye gari even in your car even in the car hata traffic even the traffic wanavosimamisha hiyo gari when they stop your car kama una uwepo wa Mungu if you have the presence of God okay. oh oh okay Peter 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 mko Wana kuna kitu wanakiona There's something they are saying Sio nguo unazozivaa It's not the dress you're putting on Sio kitu kingine hicho Not any other thing Ni ule uwepo wa Mungu tu It's the presence of God Wanasema oh Peter tumtumishi Go 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 Haleluya Lakini wewe unaanza kudiscuss na kudiscuss na kudiscuss Jamani katika uwepo wa Mungu but there you are you discuss you let your guards Hauna down mambo mengi ya kuongea in the presence of god you don't have to say so 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 much how lazimishi heshima you respect is not forced kama una uwepo wa Mungu watu wana kuheshimu if you have the presence of god you will earn respect unasema watu wananidharau usijue kwa hapana ni kiwango cha uwepo wa Mungu juu ya maisha yako. People despise me, people say this. No 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 no. It is the level of the presence of God in your life. Kwa nini watu wa, wa dunia wanapata urahisi wa kukuapproach wewe msichana na kuanza kukwambia maneno ya upuuzi bila kuogopa? Why is it that it's so easy for worldly men to approach you girl yet you are wanawezaje the prince of god they come and tell you all sorts of things watapata wa, 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 wa urahisi namna gani how will they find that easiness sio kwa kuongeza makeup sana not for not by too much makeup on your face ingawa makeup sio mbaya i am not condemning makeup lakini tuongeze uwepo wa mungu but let us increase the presence of god tuongeze uwepo wa mungu let us increase the presence Yashara of god biashara itaenda vizuri business will go Furaha well furaha itakuwa tele joy will be our portion akasema uwepo wangu utatembea pamoja na he says my presence will go with you ndio maana alifanyikisha hiyo safari and that's the reason why moses led them successfully sasa na sisi tukae hapo hapo katika uwepo now let us also remain in his presence hiyo ndio kusudi la mungu that is the purpose of god to maintain ourselves in the heavenly places spiritually tubaki katika sehemu za mbingu pamoja naye kiroho pale ndipo ambapo kila kitu kinawezekana there everything is possible with him ndipo utaanza kutembea unaona favor ya Mungu that's when you would walk and you see the presence of god hata ukiona ugumu fulani no matter what challenges you face unajua kwamba you know Mungu yuko anafanya kitu that god is doing a new thing let me tell you acha niwaambie moses said musa akasema god i need to see your glory god mungu nataka show me your glory nionyeshe 
utukufu wako show me your glory nionyesha utukufu wako says Mungu stand on that rock simama katika mwamba huo stand on that rock simama katika mwamba huo then i will put you in the cliff alafu nitakuweka kwenye ufa i will put you in the cliff hapo kwenye ufa huo then hapo i will put my hand basi nitaweka mkono wangu on top of that cliff juu ya ufa huo We want to see the glory of God. Je, ungependa kuona utukufu wa Mungu? But we don't understand. Lakini hatuelewi. There sometimes. Lakini mara nyingine. For us to see the glory of God. Ili tuweze kuona uwepo wa Mungu. We need to be in the cliff. Tunahitaji kuwa ndani ya ufa. It's not a cliff of uh, something that can expand. Sio ufa wa kitu ambacho kinaweza kupanuka. A cliff of a rock is a very tiny place. Ufa katika mwamba ni sehemu finyu. Where you are not comfortable. Ambapo huna faraja. Yaani you are squeezed in that cliff. Umebanwa katika ufa huo. I don't know if you get oxygen. Sijui kama unapata pumzi safi. And then the hand of God will be upon you. Alafu uwepo wa Mungu utakuwa juu. So Mkono wa Mungu utakuwa juu. From the open place of the cliff. Kwa hivyo katika ile sehemu iliyofunguka ya ufa That's where he was supposed to breathe. Hapo ndipo angalau angeweza kupata hewa safi. But then God put his hand. Lakini Mungu akaweka mkono wake hapa. You want to see the glory of God? Je, ungependa kuona tukufu la Mungu? Says, Mungu anasema. Stand on that rock. Simama katika mwamba huo. Then Alafu, I will put you in the cliff. Nitakuingiza katika ufa. I will cover with my own hand. Nitafunika na mkono wangu. Hiyo ni kama kufa it. It's like near death experience. It's near death experience. Ni kama kufa. And you don't know for how long. You don't know for how long. Na hujui kwa muda gani. When you are about to suffocate. Ambapo utakosa pumzi. Then God will remove his hand. Unapoanza kukosa pumzi pale, then Mungu ndipo anaachilia mkono wake. Then you, you experience unaona the mdomo wake ukipita na unaona utukufu wa Mungu. I see some people. Na naona baadhi ya watu. God has put them in a cliff. Mungu amewaweka kwenye ufa. And on top he has put his na hand. Na juu ya ufa ameweka mkono. It's not a very pleasant experience. Si jambo zuri sana hilo. But let me tell you. Lakini acha nikwambie. The second prophecy is this one. Unajua pili ni huu. There is a time. Kuna muda. From that cliff. Kutoka kwa ufa huo. I see now that the hand of God is. Naona mkono wa Mungu unaachia. coming out. Unaachia. It is now open. Sasa imefunguka. Now you are breathing the presence of God. Unaanza kuvuta pumzi Now you are breathing the glory of God. Utukufu wa Mungu. Even though he passes. Ingawaje anapita? Moses saw the glory of God. Musa akaona utukufu wa Mungu. Receive it. Pokea hilo. Receive it. Pokea hilo. That you know that you know. Ya kuwa unajua na kusadiki. Ya kuwa mimi niko katika ufa. But it is God. Lakini ni Mungu. Who has put me in that cliff. Alieniweka ndani humo. And cover with his hand. Na akanifunika na mkono wake. But at a certain point. Lakini muda fulani. His hand is about to come out mkono of me. I will see the glory of God. Na nitaona utukufu wa Mungu. I will see the smell of God. Nita vuta pumzi na harufu uwepo wa Mungu utakuwa pale pamoja na mimi huo ndio utukufu wa Mungu we cannot just receive the glory of God hatuwezi kupokea tu utukufu wa Mungu from pleasant things kwa mambo joy, joy, ya shamra shamra sh- in that cliff katika ufa huo the only way out njia moja kutoka is to worship god ni kumwabudu mungu is to worship him ni kumwabudu mungu to know that kujua even though i am in a cliff ingawaje niko katika ufa he is the one who put me in the cliff yeye ndio aliniweka katika ufa huo not to kill me si kuniua to show me his glory lakini kunionyesha stand up on your feet simama kila mtu kwa miguu yako ningekuwa wewe ningepiga zaidi ya hapo i would be i would be clapping my hands now if i were you Put your hands together for Jesus. It's not everyone who can see the glory of God. Sio kila mtu atakayeweza kuona utukufu wa Mungu. But God will put you in a cliff. Lakini Mungu atakuingiza kwenye ufa. While you are in that cliff. Ukiwa kwenye ufa. Don't complain. Usinungunike. Just worship him. Wewe muabudu Mungu tu. With the assurance ukiwa na uhakika that he is the one ya kuwa yeye who has put me in the alieniweka katika sehemu hiyo and even if i feel that i'm suffocating na hata kama najihisi nakosa pumzi this is his hand huu ni mkono wake when the moment he start uplifting his hand anapoanza kubeba na kuondoa mkono wake that's the moment i start experiencing the glory of hapo ndipo muda naanza kuona utukufu wa Mungu favor upon favor grace upon grace 
Neema jio neema. Will be manifesting. Itadhihirishwa. At that time. Hapo basi. Nothing will be impossible. Hakuna kitakachokuwa akiwezekani. The shift. Uhamisho has taken place.